Hello there guys, it's Stephen here. Manchester City have drawn with Burnley 1-1 at Turf Moor. The 8th and ninth points we dropped this season so far. And it was just one of those days, wasn't it? you got to laugh sometimes. Uh, you got to just think, that's football. We will move on. Uh, it wasn't meant to be today, I guess. We missed countless chances. There was an absolute whole host of chances that we should have taken. Should have been 3 or 4 in a look before they'd even got their goal. But that is football sometimes. It's frustrating, but we are still 16 points clear. As I'm recording this, United are about to play Huddersfield. Who knows what score that will be. Fingers crossed Huddersfield will do a favour there. But we are still hugely out in front. We are still clear we are still running away with this league so I'm not going to kick up too much of a fuss it's just a game of football and today just wasn't our day before I go too far I want to say thank you though to today's patrons Harry May, David Walton and Jason Paul seeing that guys thanks very much for getting involved and supporting this channel patreon.com forward slash esteem company if you want to have a get involved too but the game itself was frustrating but that's what happens when you don't take your chances to me it looked like a team that gradually got more and more tired all the blame will mainly fall on Ryan Sterling which is probably a little bit fair and a little bit unfair at the same time he isn't culpable for a lack of finishing today. There was plenty of touches and plenty of mistakes from other people in the final third of the pitch. De Bruyne, Gundogan, uh, Bernardo Silva, Aguero, all guilty at times of overplaying or maybe not having the best touch or finish when it must matter. It's just one of those games. It's really weird how you can see sometimes a game unfold and a scenario unfold when you look at certain things that happen. All the players got tired of around the 70 minute mark in my personal opinion and then where Raheem Sterling missed that absolute sitter and that's going on some blooper collection somewhere definitely but when he missed that you could see it almost give Burnley this belief that maybe this will be their day and football is so much about the psychological factor football is all about the, the ebb and flow of the game the mood the opportunism and Burnley sends blood there and rightfully so you could tell the people on the ground were so lucky to not be 2-0 behind you could tell the Burnley fans and the players thinking this might actually be our day there and so it transformed Inspired. The goal itself, Kyle Walker switched off, uh, but it was inevitable in general. I think City started to look a little bit hesitant when they realised that it wasn't going their whole way. It should have been a procession. I thought largely we were excellent. I think creating chances up until the final third, we were pretty pretty good. In fact, at times we were spectacular. Some of the one touch football in the first half, in particular, was a delight. We just lacked that composure and maybe lacked that clinicism that we need on days like today. But it'll happen. No team can win every single game. But as I said, that is only the eighth and ninth point we dropped so far this season which is a pretty crazy thing to say out loud you can see the players getting tired though you can see the tired passes you can see the hesitancy and people like Vincent Company in particular Vinny defensively was as solid as you'd expect for him, but he didn't really fit into the passing system that we tried to portray today. He looks a little bit re reluctant to step into midfield, which sometimes you need in our shape. I'm not going to blame him entirely, given the fact that he's not played much football, but I think we notably miss the confidence that Laporte brings, or that Alton Mendy and Stones usually tend to bring. Vinny, I love him, but he wasn't finely tuned with our style today. And it did invite pressure a little bit onto our defence. And then in the 80-odd minute, I saw Otto Mendy play a few tired passes. I mean, this basically, it caught up with us. A lack of kind of a... Uh, lack of confidence you get from being 2 or 3 nil up, that wasn't there. And in general, the amount of games we've had recently, the players started to look tired towards the end. It is funny though, isn't it, when you see all these misses and all these chances wasted and you just know what's going to happen. Sometimes football is quite a simple game. Miss a whole lot of chances, dominate, and you're probably going to concede a goal. It doesn't make it any easier to accept, but it is worth having a little bit of perspective on this. It isn't the end of the world, this result. We will be okay, we will still win the league. It's just a little bit disappointing when that should have been a game that we won 4 or 5, 6 nil. It doesn't feel at the moment we are quite at the clinical stage you were earlier this season when we were absolutely destroying teams. If this was back in September, that probably would have been, uh, you know, 5 or 6 nil. But it happens. Individually, I thought Gundogan was largely excellent today. He did waste a few chances towards the end in terms of positionally, but I thought he was bright and intelligent. Maybe we missed David Silva's leadership, but I thought he was very good today. There were some lovely free balls from Kevin De Bruyne, as always. Raheem was Raheem uh, at his worst, unfortunately. Really indecisive in front of goal. He worked as hard as he always does. But we did miss Leroy Sane out there. And I feel like if Leroy Sane had been playing, we might have scored one or two more. Because Leroy is very clinical going forward compared to some of our players. That's thing, one thing I will say about him. There was the whole situation with the six sub things as well that kind of shrouded the start of the game. You all know my personal opinions on that. If you follow me on Twitter, I wasn't impressed. I think we should always have a young lad on the bench when we can. It sends out the right message. People will turn around and say, oh yeah, the EDS played last night, but I'm sorry, you can plan that in advance. That doesn't really come into, come into it, in my opinion. The whole in the major, well, yeah, he's not been fit. Well, he's not been fit all week. I was really annoyed about that at the start. I love Pep. I think Pep's done wonderful things. I'm not complaining about the football or, in general, anything that he's done this season. But that, to me, was an oversight. I think he sent out the wrong message entirely to the CFA. And you'll have the media, the vultures circling now, picking off the bones of that and saying that Pep should be giving young lads a chance on the bench. 
Tossin and Brahim were there. Brahim got on today, which I think was maybe a slight counterpoint to the criticism that he knew he maybe get from this. But I still think we can't be doing that. I think we have to send the right message to the academy players. We have to send the right message to the parents of future potential academy players that these, these, these young lads will get a chance when it matters. But I guess we could argue about that all day. It's only a small thing in a bigger picture, I guess. I'm just quite passionate about academy players being integrated when it's possible but anyway we move swiftly on from that it does look like these games are catching up with us at the moment it does look our squad is a little bit threadbare fingers crossed we can get through the next few games relatively unscathed it's been a, a tough winter and I think it may be caught with us a little bit today but Burnley are on a bad team in fact they're a very good team playing good football under Sean Dyche we forget that uh, they deserve the point maybe for sticking in I don't actually think they deserve the point at all I'm, I'm telling I'm talking bullshit there but the only I guess through our wastefulness it's our own fault entirely we shot ourselves in the foot guys what did you make of that match? I guess it's one small dip in a pretty excellent season so far. Guys, let me know in the comments your man the match and all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you next time. This is just a quick PS. I totally forgot to mention Danilo's goal. I'm so sorry, Danilo. He's obviously not watching, but if he was, mate, that was a hell of a goal. An absolute peach of a strike. And he's quickly stolen Zinchenko's front of the and the attempts to score a wonder goal from left back. It's a beautiful goal, and he probably deserved better on another day. Oh, well. Anyway, this is the actual ending of the video now. Roll, roll the end board on that. Hello there guys, it's Stephen here. Thanks for watching another Esteem Company video. I want to say a very big thank you to the latest patrons and all the people that have been supporting this channel financially for months now. It makes such a difference to me personally. Though it wasn't the best result today, I've got to say, all you people who are getting involved in the comments and liking these videos as well, even if you're not supporting a patron, it still means a lot to me. It still cheers me up no end. So thank you very much. I really create these videos just for you guys. So the fact that you're willing to get involved and help this channel, well, it means a lot. Thank you.